Welcome achievers to MySciences.com. This is Mr. Aguirre with another online lab. Today's lab comes to us from the California Holt Earth Science Edition and the quick lab is entitled The Angle of the Sun's Rays. The California standard is investigation and experimentation 1G which is students will recognize the usefulness and limitations of using models. The objective question we're going to answer is why is it hot during the summer? In the Roman Empire, as far back as 1 BC, Pliny, in his book Natural History, used the word solstice. Solstice is a Latin word meaning san, sun stands still. The Earth summer solstice occurs on June 21st or 22nd, while the winter solstice occurs on December 21st or 22nd. Some cultures use these dates to indicate the beginning of their seasons, while other cultures use these dates as to indicating the middle point in the season. The solstice is when the sun as it crosses the sky is either at its highest or lowest point in the hemisphere. The equinox is a Latin word also meaning equal night. The fall equinox occurs on September 22nd or 23rd, while the spring equinox occurs on March 20th or 21st. The equinox is when both the northern and southern hemisphere have equal amounts of light. To demonstrate this, we have a globe. It's pointing at a 23.5 degree tilt. Notice that the equator at this point isn't right here in the middle, but rather down here, much farther south, and it's tilted up. If the sun were here in the middle, both northern and southern hemisphere would experience the same amount of sunlight. This would be the spring equinox. Three months later, notice that the pole is still the, at a 23.5 degree tilt, and the sun, which is 93 million miles away, or 150 kilometers away, is now the sun's rays are now pointing more at the, well, I'm going the wrong direction. As the Earth orbits, the northern hemisphere experiences direct sunlight, thus giving the northern hemisphere its summer. Now, three months later, we would have the fall equinox, the sun being on the back here, and again, in the equinox, both the northern and southern hemisphere would experience the same amount of sunlight. Three months later, we would have the winter solstice. Now, notice that the equator is much higher, and again, tilted. So in this case, the sun itself is 147 million kilometers away from the sun. So it's actually at perihelion. So this is the closest. However, the northern hemisphere is pointed away from the sun because the Earth is still tilted at a 23.5 degree angle. So the northern hemisphere is getting angled sunlight while the southern hemisphere is getting direct sunlight. So this would be the southern hemisphere's summer while it would be the northern hemisphere's winter. An interesting point also is the tilt of the Earth right now is at 23.5 degree angle. But when it was at a 23 degree angle, the northern part of, uh, of Africa was actually a lush tropical rainforest. So never underestimate the small degrees of um, tilt in the Earth. To demonstrate the angles of the sun and how important they are, we're going to use a flashlight, tape, piece of paper, pencil, and two meter sticks. You're going to take the piece of paper and tape it down. You're going to probably want to mark where you put your ruler, and then this is probably best done on the floor. You're going to turn your light on, and wherever you see the darkness and the light meet, you're going to draw a line. And the line is probably going to be something very close to a circle. The second part to this experiment is taking this at about a 30 degree angle. So on the meter stick, it's about 50 centimeters. You're going to take the flashlight again, turn it on, and you're going to draw where the, where the light and the darkness or the shadows meet. And now what you have is more of an elliptical line. In the book, you're going to answer two questions. Comparing the two circles, which circle concentrates the light in a smaller area? So clearly, the circle that is at 90 degrees when we have the flashlight is getting concentrated light. So that's going to be more intense and more direct sunlight, so that's going to be the hottest one. And then which circle would most likely model the sun's rays striking Earth during the summer season? Again, it would be the light coming in at a 90 degree angle. Now, 
the Earth, as I mentioned, was a 23.5 degree angle. If it was Uranus, it would be at a 90 degree angle. And this is also true of what would happen to Earth if it had no moon. A planet like Mars right now is at a 25 degree angle, but because it lacks a moon of relatively large size like the Earth, one day it will go to 90 degrees. Other planets like Jupiter or Venus are at a 3 degree angle, and they experience small seasons. So the reason we have a summer on Earth is because it's, the Earth is tilted and because of the direct sunlight. So this is Mr. Geary from MySciences.com, signing off.